Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some of my favorite tropes in romance books as well as some recommendations. So I thought this would be a really fun idea. I think I've seen some of my friends do this. I think I've seen McKay possibly do this. I can't remember but I'll link her channel down below. Go check her out. McKay is fabulous. Okay so um, I'm going to be talking about 10 of my favorite romance tropes, tropes I love to see in romance books. The majority of these books are going to be contemporary, like not my alien monster romances. Sorry about that. But I just thought I'd do something different today. I haven't really done a video like this before. And so these are 10 romance tropes that I absolutely love. And I'm going to be recommending two books within that trope that you can read if you have not yet. I probably have recommendation videos for almost every single one of these tropes. You can go look those up if you want even more recommendations with that specific trope. Um, but yeah, these are like my favorites and some of my favorite books with these tropes. The first one that I have is the forced proximity trope. I love a good forced proximity. It really forces the characters because they're in close forced proximity together to either admit their feelings or come to terms with their feelings. Like I could read books with forced proximity like all day long. Okay, so two books that I have with that trope is The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott. The heroine is uh, moving to New York and um her apartment very tiny really run down apartment gets broken into a few times and she needs a new place to stay she ends up bumping into the hero one day when he's working at an italian restaurant one night in new york and they kind of get talking and he lets it slip like oh i'm gonna have to do something extra this month because like i'm struggling to make ends meet and make rent she's like you know what how about for the short time being while well, i'm trying to write my graphic novel and possibly send it out to publishers that um, I'll pay you some rent money and you just let me sleep in your apartment with you. Like, just let me stay there. His apartment is very small. Like there's room for a bed, a couch, a table, and that's like it. <laughs> so she ends up like sleeping on an air mattress on the floor for quite a long time until they start sharing the bed together, okay? There's that very iconic scene where like, the hero's like, that air mattress is uncomfortable. Like, come sleep in the bed with me, okay? It's so good. They're like stuck in this shoebox of an apartment together. And whew, it gets really, really, really fun. Hidden Waters by Catherine Cowles is another one. This is my favorite book in the Tattered and Torn series. Um, the heroine of the story, she's escaping like a life of um, abuse, basically. She grew up in a cult and her family still lives kind of close by. Her She grew up with her family in a cult and um, her family have ostracized her because she left that life. She now like is in like supported by her cousin um, and her cousin actually has an extra house because she moved out of that house to move in with her boyfriend so the heroine of the story Addie is actually living in that house but then her cousin's boyfriend's brother yeah <laughs> ends up moving back into town it doesn't really have anywhere to stay for the time being and um, Addie's like you know what like I don't have any say in who lives here even though I might be a little bit uncomfortable with a man living with me like he seems very nice like okay let's live in the house together his name is Beckett he's a doctor and um, he is going to be very gentle and kind and sweet with Addie. Like, I absolutely love Beckett's temperament. Like, his temperament is what I seek in a man. Like, uh, I like, I think about him sometimes. I'm just like, that's what I want. I want a man just like Beckett. <laughs> so I love that. And then there's also like a suspense element in here with um, Addie's family not being very happy about the fact that she left that lifestyle and someone's out to get her. So there's a little bit of that suspense element in here, but the forced proximity is definitely because of the fact that they're living together in this house. <laughs> Another trope that I absolutely adore is obviously grumpy sunshine. You cannot go wrong with a good grumpy sunshine, whether the heroine's the grump or the hero's the grump, whatever the case may be. I love me a grumpy sunshine. So the creme de la creme, like the best one ever. The heroine is the grump in this one. It's Always Only You by Chloe Lisa. Best ever. Another hero that I would like absolutely die on the hill for is Ren Bergman. I want my own Ren Bergman. I'm gonna put him in a printer and like clone him and make him mine. So like Frankie can have him, but like I can also have him too. Okay, okay. So <laughs> Frankie is the social media manager for the hockey team that Ren is on and her house, this is also extra force proximity now that I think about it. Yeah, her house gets broken into and the locks and windows are kind of broken right now. So Ren offers up like his spare bedroom while those are getting fixed and they have to stay in the same house for a few days. Um, Ren has been slowly crushing on Frankie, like knows that Frankie is the one for him. 
but he knows that Frankie's not ready for a relationship yet. She's never like insinuated that. So they've only ever really been friends. And then, but then those feelings start to shift obviously. Um, but Frankie in here is the grump. She has rheumatoid arthritis and has autism. So I really love those representations in here. And Ren in here, I love him. He's the sunshiny of sunshine men. I love me a sunshine man. And then on the flip side, one with the grumpy hero and a sunshine heroine is The Gravity of Us by Brittany Cherry. Like another iconic book in this trope. Lucy is our heroine. She wears her heart on her sleeve. I think she owns a floral shop, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she absolutely just loves life, um, but then she gets roped into helping Graham raise the baby that his wife or fiance, whoever the case may be, I don't remember if they're married or not. Anyway, his, I'm going to say fiance, I think fiance, fiance left the newborn baby she just gave birth to with him and, um, abandoned them. And Graham is kind of like drowning and won't admit it. And Lucy is there, like shows up every day to come help, even though he's very grumpy and gruff and sometimes mean about it. Like he wants to try and do it all on his own, but he physically cannot. So Lucy is there to help him out. But I absolutely love this one. Single dad romance with a baby in here. Like, yes. I am a friends to lovers girly. Give me a friends to lovers book any day over enemies to lovers. Okay. I'm sorry. Like I'm, I'm not actually not sorry. Um, but Friends to Lovers just speaks to my soul way more than enemies to lovers or hates love. I just, I, I adore it way more. I love seeing the slow progression from friends to lovers because that's how I want to see a romance play out. I'd rather have the love grow in a very organic, natural way than having like you hate somebody. And you know what? Like I like hate to love. Okay. I like enemies to lovers, but like friends to lovers trumps it all. Okay. Trumps it, trumps it completely. You will not change my mind about this. So in the comments, if you're trying to change your mind, you won't, okay? <laughs> I will die on this hill. One that I read recently that I actually really did enjoy is Love Light Farms by BK Borison. I really enjoyed this one. You have two characters who have unrequited feelings for each other. They're best friends, but you don't wanna like cross that line and ruin their friendship. The heroine Stella owns a Christmas tree farm and Luca is her best friend and he gets kind of roped into pretending to be her fake boyfriend for a specific reason. Um, I don't want to go too deep into it because this video is going to be very long. <laughs> um, but this is a great Friends to Lovers read. I really enjoyed this one. The second book in the series is going to be popping up later in this video. Um, but if you want to pick up a book with like amazing winter vibes for like December, like please pick this one up. If you want one on the shorter range, um, I have Go Deep by Rilsley Adams. The heroine of the story is a very prolific romance writer um but she's kind of gotten some bad reviews recently about her spice in her recent books reviewers are essentially saying that like the spark isn't really there it's not like there's not the hot factor isn't really there anymore she's like darn i guess i need to get like some inspiration again like what do i do so she tasks asks her best friend who just happens to be a man <laughs> to help her be inspired in that department again. And so they kind of tow that line of friendship into like a more of a physical relationship. And that kind of opens their eyes to like, whoa, we are so good together. I think I wanna be with you more than just friends. And that kind of forces them to like realize like, you're my best friend, but I also wanna spend the rest of my life with you. So Ooh, if you want a really hot, good novella, like please pick this one up. I love Bodyguard Row. It's like, oh, I need more in my life. I haven't read that many. I think I only have one rec video on my channel for bodyguard romances because I need more. Leave your recs down below. I need to read more of them. So one of the best ones ever is obviously Broken Vow by Sophie Lurk. I just picked this book up. Man, this book is heavy. <laughs> I haven't held this book in a while. Okay, so this one's about Raylan and Riona. Um, Riona is a part of a mafia family and she is being hit on by hitman essentially she's like people are out to kill her and so Raylan is hired to be her bodyguard he is this this is also grumpy sunshine by the way so he's this very sunshiny cowboy who's tasked to be the bodyguard to Fiona a very prickly red-headed woman and we love her we love her so much an underrated one that I haven't like seen a lot of people talk about is The Protector by Jodie Ellen Malpass I think this was one of the first bodyguard romances that I ever read. Um, it's very forbidden. The heroine, her father is like this very popular or like famous man and someone's had to get her father. So in retaliation, they're trying to get her. So the father hires the bodyguard to watch over her, but they end up falling for each other. And he's like trying to keep his distance so hard. Like he's trying to be like, no, I cannot fall for you. Like 
you're my client's daughter not happening, but he just cannot help himself. It's a really fun read. I want to read more by this author. So again, leave your recs down below. Arranged marriage romances are next. I can get with an arranged marriage romance, especially when it's like mafia, really fun. Um, so the first one that I have is The Wild Air by Karina Halley. This is actually a royalty romance as well, which will be another another trope that I will talk about later in this video. Um, but this is actually a arranged marriage for a marriage alliance between two countries. Prince Magnus of Norway is known to be like a very much a playboy and he's not very happy when his family tells him that he's gonna have to get married. He's gonna have to get married to the very straight-laced princess of Liechtenstein named Isabella. They're both not happy about the situation. They try and cut it off a few times because they don't get along at first. Um, but through them getting to know one, each other, one another during this arrangement, like they end up falling for each other, obviously. I think this is like my second favorite in the series. I feel like a lot of people hype up book number three, A Nordic King, but not a lot of people have read number two. This one, it's definitely worth the read, okay? And the other one that I have for arranged marriage is Silent Lies by Neva Altaj. This is her most recent book in her Perfectly Imperfect Mafia Romance series. This is about Sienna and Drago. So they are from different mafia families and they are put in a arranged marriage to align their families. Sienna is actually from the Costa Nostra family and the boss of that mafia family um tells her to spy on Drago <laughs> and um Drago like knows from the get-go like that's what's going on um but yeah he ends up falling for this very unique woman <laughs> and it's really beautiful to see like it's one of my favorites in like the later half of this series that she's come out with um the hero is also hard of hearing so there's that representation as well all these books have fantastic representation in them. I can also get with a good captor captive romance, okay? They're a little bit more on the darker side, but I love them. I love them. They're really fun. I like suspend my disbelief, okay? Like I don't actually support captor captive romances in real life, okay? I don't. <laughs> but they're, they're like, I love reading about these people falling in love with each other. I just do. One that is very much enemies to lovers is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. So this is, has like a little bit of fantastical elements to it. So Pestilence in here is the god of like the plague. You have the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right? So he's been sent to spread this plague throughout the earth and kill as many humans as possible. Um, then the heroine of the story is like, I'm going to sacrifice myself and try and kill Pestilence to save the world. So she does that. She ends up blowing him up, burning him up. And she's like, oh my gosh, I killed him. She doesn't know the pestilence cannot die. He comes back to life and is like sworn on revenge. So he's going to find this woman and make her life a living hell because she literally burned him alive. And he's like, I'm gonna torture you. Literally finds her, ties her to the back of his horse and drags her for miles and miles and miles and miles. Like she's literally laying on her back being dragged in the dirt. And like, that's the beginning of this story. And it turns into more, They there's more hate-filled moments, obviously. Um, but he captures her, kidnaps her, and forces her to watch him kill the entire human race. So, definitely some dark elements in this one. One of my favorite books of the year is this historical romance. It's called Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. It's the first book in one of her series. I don't know the title of the series. Oh. Uh, the Notorious Ladies of London. There we go. The first book in that series. Um, the hero of the story is uh, Lord Sin. And there is this series of articles going about called The Sins of Lord Sin, where there are a bunch of nasty, horrible things being written about him, but in like his perspective. So people think that he's writing about these horrible taboo things he's done. The ton of kind of like ostracized him. He cannot find a wife. And he's pissed. So he ends up tracking down Lady Calliope, who just happens to be the woman who's been writing these articles, who hates him, and this is the way to get revenge on him, is to write these articles. So he ends up kidnapping her and bringing her to one of his estates in the middle of nowhere, ties her to the bed, and is like, you cannot leave this room until you agree to be my wife, because you owe me for making up all these rumors about me, but also because no one else will marry me and I need a wife, so. That's how it starts out. I really love this because it starts out in the middle of the scene where he's kidnapping her, like, iconic okay i'm obsessed with nanny romances <laughs> i can't get enough of them so one that i absolutely loved 
is Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. This is more of the darker side because this is also a mafia romance. The heroine of the story, um, she cannot speak. She has a vocal cord injury, so she communicates via ASL. And she gets hired by her hero, who is a mafia boss, to watch over his son, who is I think like six or seven years old. And this is their romance. Um, it's very forbidden. A lot of dark elements gets gory at times. So just like watch out. <laughs> Not a lot of people have read this next one. It's so unfortunate because it's really good. This is Untouchable by Talia Hibbert. Talia Hibbert has written a nanny romance and it is so good. Anna and her family have kind of been ostracized by this very small town and no one really hired her for a job. She loves to be a nanny. Um, but then Nathaniel, who she grew up with in high school, like they went to the same high school together. I think he's a few years older than her, if I'm not mistaken. Or it's the other way around. I can't remember, honestly, but they did go to the same high school and he's the only person that will hire her to watch over his kids. And she's like, of course. But he kind of regrets the decision of hiring Hannah because she's very, very tempting. <laughs> and he's like, I cannot hit on her. I hire this woman. That is so unprofessional. He cannot help himself, okay? She cannot help herself either. So one of my favorite scenes, like I literally think about this scene all the time is like, they build a fort together in the living room and there's like a really, like with the kids, obviously. And there's this like fantastic moment between the two of them in this like pillow fort. And I can't, I, I never stop thinking about it. Here we are with royalty romances. I love them. I love them in alien romances. I love them in contemporary romances. I love them in fantasy romances. Give me all the royal people, please. Obviously, Royally Matched by Emma Chase is my pick. <laughs> this is the romance between Henry and Sarah. This is one of my favorite romance books of all time, by the way. Um, I love seeing this reformed royal playboy absolutely change his ways for this soft, like, soft-spoken, but very strong woman. I love Sarah so much. Like I really connect and relate to her. So like, I, I love her so much. Anyway, this is about him signing up to be on Bachelor Royal Edition, but he ends up falling for one of the contestants sisters instead named Sarah. And they are vastly different. They come from entirely different worlds, but it doesn't really matter. I love this one. The whole series is a royalty romance. You can check out the whole series if you would like. I do really recommend though, reading the first book before you dive into this one, because there's some repercussions from book one that affects Henry. In book two. If you're wanting a little bit of a shorter read, I have The King's Horrible Ride by Katie Wilde. This takes place, I think, in like a made up country. I can't remember the name for the life of me. Um, but the hero of the story, he just became king a few years ago. And there was this very prolific, famous inventor, a part of the country that kind of helped their economy flourish. As a gesture of thanks, the king basically tells him, like, I'll marry one of your daughters and ha have her have the best life ever because of how much you've done for this country. It's been years since he's made that promise. The heroine doesn't really think it's gonna really happen. They haven't spent as much time together. He's been king for a few years and he's never really fulfilled his promise. But the beginning of the story starts out with her getting a phone call saying like, you have been summoned to the palace. And you have all of his advisors telling him like, this woman is not gonna be a good queen. She's gonna be a horrible queen. Um, but the hero doesn't care what they say. And I love him. I love me a good small town romance. So that is definitely a trope on this list. So one that I really enjoyed is Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. I believe this whole series, the Popular Falls series is a small town romance series. So this is about a big city girl coming back home to her father's ranch and falling for one of the ranch boys. Um, if you love The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, I think you'd really vibe well with this one. And then also In the Weeds by B. Key Borison, I talked about Love Light Farms a little bit ago. Um, but this series gives me Stars Hollow vibes. Like, ugh, I want to live in Stars Hollow so badly from Gilmore Girl. I feel like B.K. Borison, the author of this book series, really took inspiration from Stars Hollow because I can totally feel that vibe in this series and I love it. Um, so this is a second chance romance between Beckett and Evie. They had a one night, few night situation thing that happened a few months ago and they run back into each other at, in Love Light Farms. And this is about Evie kind of spending a few months in Love Light Farms to try and find her happy again because she hasn't really been loving what she's been doing with her life. And Beckett is kind of there to at first begrudgingly help her along the way. And then the last trip that I have is actually Surprise Baby. I actually don't mind a Surprise Baby book. Um, I love babies, in, I love babies in general. So like, I love when there's a baby in a book. Um, but actually this year, I've actually started really liking 
surprise baby book. So obviously my favorite book of the year is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young, which is a surprise baby book. Um, this is about Bo and Wynn who meet at a Halloween party. They have a one night situation happenstance and Wynn ends up getting pregnant because of it. Um, I love the representation here. Both characters are disabled. Like it's so good. It's my favorite book of the year for a reason. <laughs> like, like I could reread this book to the my dying day. I can't wait for the audiobook to come out because I will just listen to it over and over and over again. Like I know that I'm going to. And the other book that I have to mention is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings. You have another situation where these two characters had a one night tryst that led into something more. The two of them move in together and trying to figure out life while our heroine in here is pregnant. So that's all I want to say with that one. I don't want to spoil anything. I actually do really enjoy this trope and I want to read more. So again, leave more recommendations for any of these tropes, by the way, any of these tropes, leave your recommendations. I would love them. Anyways, uh, there you have it. Those are some of my favorite tropes with some recommendations sprinkled in there. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a, let's see, let's do the um, crown emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.